Processing H-1B CAP visas for 2022, USCIS announces updates. I'm your host, John Veely, immigration attorney and CEO of Online Visas, the intelligent immigration platform. If you'd like to learn more about what we cover in this video, go to onlinevisas.com. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, announced efforts to increase efficiency and reduce burdens to the overall legal immigration system. The agency will set new agency-wide backlog reduction goals, expand premium processing to additional form types, and work to improve timely access to employment authorization documents, EADs. Current administration actions. These measures are necessary due to the COVID-19 pandemic and resource restraints resulting from the prior administration, which have led to an increase in pending cases and processing times at USCIS. Through today's actions by the Biden administration, USCIS is acting to reduce these caseloads and processing times while also ensuring that fair and efficient services are available to applicants and petitioners. USCIS Director Ur M. Jadu recently said, USCIS remains committed to delivering timely and fair decisions to all we serve. Every application we adjudicate represents the hopes and dreams of immigrants and their families, as well as their critical immediate needs, such as financial stability and humanitarian protection. Backlog reduction goals and cycle time. USCIS is establishing new internal cycle time goals this month. These goals are internal metrics that guide the backlog reduction efforts of the USCIS workforce and affect how long it takes for the agency to process cases. As cycle times improve, processing times will follow and applicants and petitioners will quickly receive decisions on their cases. To achieve these new goals, USCIS will increase capacity, improve technology, and expand staffing by fiscal year 2023. The Department of Homeland Security, DHS, publicly available processing times displays the typical duration it takes the agency to process a specific form for when it is received until a decision is rendered on the case. USCIS keeps track of the number of pending cases in its workload, utilizing a statistic called cycle times. A cycle time reflects how many months worth of pending applications for a particular form is waiting for a decision. Cycle times are an internal management measurement comparable to the agency's publicly published median processing times. Since 2009, USCIS has used aggregate pending and receipt counts to measure processing time. This method does not rely on individual case processing information, but instead provides a snapshot of the entire workload at a given time. The problem with this is that it can be significantly affected by the times cases filed at certain times, resulting in inaccurate measurements. To address this issue and improve accuracy, USCIS began using actual case record information in 2018. This data allows us to measure how long it takes to process each case from start to finish. In doing so, USCIS can more accurately assess its progress towards meeting agency-wide backlog reduction goals. Premium Processing the agency is also expanding premium processing to additional form types. Premium processing is a service that allows applicants and petitioners to pay an extra fee to have their cases adjudicated more quickly. The fees are $2,500, and if you file Form I-129 requesting E-1, E-2, E-3, H-1B, H-3, L, including the blanket L-1, O, P, Q, or TN non-immigrant classifications. $1,500 if you file the Form I-129 acquiring an H-2B or R classification. Since its inception in 2005, premium processing has been available for Form I-129, Petition for Non-Immigrant Workers, and the Form I-140, Immigrant Petition for Alien Workers. On March 29, 2022, the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, announced a final rule that aligns premium processing regulations with the Emergency Stopgap USCIS Stabilization Act. The rule codifies premium processing fees and adjudication timeframes provided by Congress. The premium processing service is now available to petitioners filing a Form I-129, Petition for Non-Immigrant Worker, Immigrant Petition for Alien Workers, and certain employment-based immigrant visa petitioners filing a Form I-140, 
USCIS anticipates this change will reduce overall case processing times by allowing us to work on more cases concurrently. The final rule is an also a response to the congressional direction that the agency expands premium processing availability. The expansion of premium processing must not cause an increase in processing times for regular immigration benefit requests. DHS will begin implementing through a phased approach premium processing availability for Form I-129 petitions for non-immigrant workers, Form I-140 immigrant petitions for alien workers, and the Form I-765 application for employment authorization in the fiscal year 2022. This change is part of the continued effort to improve efficiency and reduce the backlog. USCIS plans to begin this phased implementation processing by extending premium processing eligibility to form I-140 filers requesting EB-1 immigrant classifications as multinational executives or managers or EB-2 immigrant classifications as members of professions with advanced degrees or exceptional ability seeking a national interest waiver. The expansion of premium processing will also be available to additional visa types. Employment authorization documents. EADs have been a hot topic in the United States lately. USCIS has been progressing and streamlining the process and their latest move is a temporary final rule that will increase efficiency. This new rule named temporary increase of the automatic extension period of employment authorization and documentation for certain renewal applicants will extend the validity period for certain EADs. Additionally, it will provide expedited work authorization renewals for health care and child care workers. This is excellent news as it will help to ensure that these individuals do not lose their work authorization status while their applications are pending. USCIS is hopeful that this new rule will help to improve efficiency within the agency. It is important to note that this rule respond to a congressional requirement. The temporary final rule aims to build on this progress and ensure specific individuals will not lose their work authorization status while their applications are pending. If you have any questions about this new rule or how it may impact you, please don't hesitate to contact us. This ends the updates announced by USCIS. If you want to discuss you or your company's situation, go to onlinevisas.com and set up a strategy session. If you want to stay up to speed on the ever-changing world of immigration by subscribing to Online Visas, like, share, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm John Veely, CEO of Online Visas, the intelligent immigration platform where we deliver dreams.